In the heart of the American trucking industry, this industry is the backbone of the entire economy when it comes to the USA. But behind the scenes, it's quite chaotic and it's pretty fragmented. So today, we're gonna talk about why this is in this video. So this video is an educational objective. We're trying to share all the things that influence the trucking industry. It's a great video for you guys to watch if you want to get into this industry or if you are in this industry to realize what are the pain points and what you need to consider in order to make a better trucking company out of the one that you're currently working at, that you own, or potentially if you're trying to get into this industry, a way forward for yourself. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for this entire channel. We have a lot of different content. It's not just about trucking. We got things about brokering. We got things about forwarding, shipping in general, import export stuff. So lots of stuff on the channel. Everything is to do around logistics and hence the name of the channel World of Logistics. First off, the trucking industry has come a very long way since the early 90s, or excuse me, the early 1900s, okay? So back then, when it all kind of came to fruition, it was a lot simpler back then, of course, right? There's fewer regulations, fewer players in the game as well, and over the decades, the landscape really did change drastically. It changed a lot. So the Motor Carrier Act of the 1980s uh, deregulated the industry. And uh, it was aiming to actually try to develop a competition uh, or influence or benefit or engage more competition and lower prices. While it did succeed 100% in many ways, it also led to an influx of new trucking companies, new transportation providers, each looking to get a piece of their pie uh, as, as a whole. So the 1980 Motor Carrier Act did with it bring a lot of significant changes to the trucking industry some of these things are things like as mentioned increased competition so the number of trucking companies skyrocketed and it led to a lot of a lot more competition in the industry another also what happened with this 80s act is the lower shipping costs came to the forefront so this deregulation led to reduced shipping costs for both shippers and, of course, respectively consumers as well. There was also productivity gains. Trucking companies saw productivity improvements because of this deregulation. In addition to this, there was a growth in the industry as well in terms of size. It went from a $9 billion industry to a $30 billion industry to what it is today, which is an $800 plus billion industry just in the United States alone. Also, <coughs> it led to reduced inventories. So manufacturers could actually reduce inventories and respond more quickly to cons uh, customer demands or consumer demands in, in, in essence. In addition to all of this, there's also an economic savings. So shippers pretty much started saving up to $7 billion annually in the 1987 um, explanation of how this has affected trucking seven years into it due to these deregulated rates and, and this deregulation process. There was also a market responsiveness, okay? So the industry became more responsive to market demands. In other words, it was able to meet customer demand a lot quicker and with a lot more reasonable rates as well in that respect. There was also an increased efficiency. There was more efficient transportation of goods because of this deregulation. From a consumer benefit side, consumers indirectly benefit from, of course, the lower cost to transport the goods. There was also cost, uh, there was also job creation. So the industry created more jobs to due to the increased demand and competition as well. In addition to this, there was also technological advancements. Okay, so the re deregulation definitely did increase technological innovations in logistics and transportation. There was also an environmental impact. There were stricter emission standards. Uh, that were introduced due to this deregulation. There was also safety regulations. So there was enhanced safety regulations that were impl uh, implemented. Driver shortages. Uh, there was persistent driver shortages that came out of this due to higher turnover rates and increased demand as well. There was also economic pressures. So companies faced economic pressures like fluctuating fuel prices. 
There was also a fragmented market that came out of this deregulation. So the market became more fragmented with many small family owned businesses. This is why when you're looking at the map, it's like 90% of the four hire truck market is going to be your family run businesses, your smaller businesses that you're dealing with anyways. In addition to this, regulatory changes happened too. So companies had to navigate uh, a complex regulatory landscape. A lot of things had to be considered to make sure that you're compliant with the system as a whole. There was also consolidation efforts that were made. And in addition to all of this, there was also a suggested consolidation and collaboration um, in, 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 in terms of this as well, okay? Today, there are over 300,000 trucking companies in the United States alone. And most of these are, like I said, family-owned businesses. This fragmentation, though, makes coordination and standardization a, a big challenge. Okay, so the trucking market is fragmented for several reasons. First off, there's low barriers to entry. So it's relatively easy and inexpensive, relatively speaking, to start a trucking company leading to a larger number of small independent owner operators okay and the deregulation of that 1980 that deregulated the industry increased competition and reduced the, these barriers to entry respectively there's also an increase in the competition so thousands of these trucking companies compete for contracts drivers making it relatively difficult for any single company to just dominate the market in full there's also economic pressure. So smaller companies often struggle with fluctuating fuel prices, uh, insurance costs, and driver shortages as well. So this leads to higher turnover rates and unfortunately business closures as well. And that's what we're seeing right now as well because of the whole lower vo volumes, lower rates, lower demand. And we're seeing a, a, an increase in the amount of uh, business to trucking companies that are closing or shutting their doors. Right. This obviously doesn't mean anything for the big boys. They're happy about this. But for us, smaller, smaller folks um, that just have a few trucks or 20, 30 trucks, you know, for us, it definitely does affect us in that way as well. OK, in addition to this, there's also rapid technological changes that require continuous investments, which can be challenging for smaller companies. OK, so think of things like electronic logging devices, for example. OK, uh, also the regulatory complexity uh, is getting more and more. There's federal and state regulations that trucking companies have to navigate through. Right They 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 change these every couple of years. It seems they change some drastic measures that affect trucking companies. And it's more cost, right, because you have more things to regulate. And a lot of these things come with monthly expenses as well, which is uh, in and of itself is difficult to navigate through as well. In addition to all of this, there's also um, a, a, a technological revolution. And this uh, tech that has come into the industry has really revolutionized in full how it all works. So it, it adds layers of uh, complexity, new systems, and also apps or applications, whatever you want to call them, that are constantly being developed. And um, not all companies can actually keep up to this. OK, so the trucking industry has these uh, tech apps and advancements to they're trying to at least that's their mission statement that they're trying to improve efficiency, safety, sustainability as a whole. So things like, as mentioned a few moments ago, electronic logging devices is just one. Now, these ELDs, they're devices that automatically record driving hours that ensures compliance regulations and reducing paperwork as well. That's the mission statement of the ELDs. Of course, they have other things um, that are that are included in there, not just for driver hours. Autonomous trucks are slowly coming into the picture and self-driving trucks are becoming more and more advanced with there's even some like you guys know already being tested on public roads, uh, typically between California, Arizona, Texas, Nevada, in that area down there as well. Electric trucks, right? There's a shift towards EV vehicles or electric vehicles, and it's gaining a little bit of a momentum. Their, their mission statement is reducing emissions and fuel costs That's and saving the environment. That's what they're saying. So I don't know how you guys feel about EVs. You guys can let me know in the comments below. 
There's also telematics that, that are in this tech advancement of the trucking industry. So GPS, uh, onboard diagnostic, uh, diagnostics. So it's providing like real time data or data on vehicle performance, location, driver behavior, right? Driver slams the brake. Uh, the brakes, we get a notification in the office that the driver slammed his brakes in real time, that kind of stuff. There's also route optimization software. So there's advanced algorithms that help plan the most efficient routes, saving time and fuel in that respective. Uh, there's also predictive maintenance systems or applications that are available out there. So these systems use data analytics to predict when maintenance may be needed, reducing downtime and also repair uh, costs as well. There's also big data analytics, so it's leveraging large data sets to optimize logistics, improve supply chain efficiency, and make data-driven decisions more efficient. You guys have maybe also heard about something called platooning. So trucks uh, may drive in a convoy using automated driving technologies, reducing wind resistance, improving fuel efficiency. Think of it like a line of trucks. Uh, behind each other right one here one here one behind that one let's say a set of three trucks to improve fuel efficiency and help with uh, wind resistance reduction as well uh, this is a tech advancement that's ha uh, that's happening right now and is even being tested out on actual roads as well there's also CMS systems or collision, uh, collision mitigation systems so there are advanced sensors and software to help prevent accidents uh, by detecting potential hazards and taking corrective actions. And of course, this would help with safety ratings and help with insurance and uh, claims and potentially nuclear verdicts, as you guys may have heard in the industry about nuclear verdicts. And those are devastating for any trucking company and any human being involved in those uh, family side, everybody, everybody involved in that. There's also digital yard management. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but it's automated systems that manage the movement of trailers and shipping yards. And that's improving efficiency and reducing congestion. That's the mission statement of these type of companies. There's also trailer tracking. So things like GPS tracking of trailers that helps monitor their location status. It enhances security and logistics planning. This is their mission statement when it comes to trailer tracking technology out there. There's also aerodynamic enhancements as well. So innovations like trailer gap devices, reduce drag and improve fuel efficiency. That's that's something that's available out in the industry as well. Uh, you guys have probably heard about the development of hydrogen power trucks as an alternative to tradi traditional uh, diesel engines. There's also delivery drones that are happening as well. This is in the early stages. Drones are being explored for that last mile delivery location. So from like warehouse slash distribution center to the door to your front doorstep that's in the industry as well that's that's kind of a tech advancement that's happening right now i do think we're we're a ways away from that being just a standard in the industry but nonetheless it's happening there's also agvs so automated guided vehicles it's used for internal transport within warehouses and distribution centers there's also enhanced driving solutions. So technologies that assist drivers with navigating um, through city blocks, parking and other driving tasks as well. There's also clickless interfaces. OK, so this is reducing manual data uh, input time, allowing dispatchers to manage more vehicles efficiency efficiently. OK, so it's, it's allowing dispatchers to handle more trucks at once than they otherwise humanly would be able to do. You guys may have heard of subscription-based pricing. So there's models like Max Electrify plan that offers usage-based pricing for commercial vehicles. Uh, you guys can check that out on your own time if you'd like to learn more about information on that side. So Max Electrify, Electrify plan. Okay, there's also ILT systems or integrated logistics technology. And these uh, ILTs are combining various tech solutions to streamline operations and improve supply chain management as well. And there's also, of course, mission statements for a lot of these are sust sustainability initiatives. So there's efforts to reduce carbon emissions, improve environmental impact through various technological innovations as well. However, my personal opinion is that's a ways away from being 100% reality because we're using fossil fuels to make... Um, electrical uh, grids to make EV vehicles. We're still using fossil fuels to make that kind of stuff. 
So I don't really see the 100% benefit yet, but maybe in the future, I guess we'll see as well what happens. As mentioned, also, the industry is heavily regulated, uh, but the regulations can be inconsistent and confusing for a lot of people. So different states really have different rules and federal guidelines uh, guidelines are evolving all the time. They're changing every day, it seems. So the trucking industry is heavily regulated to ensure safety, security, environmental uh, uh, protection. And some of these regulations that you guys are going to be facing in the industry is things like driver qualifications. So there are regulations uh, set. There are set standards for driver qualifications. So it includes things like age, licensing, uh, medical exams, and training requirements for these drivers as well. There's also HOS rules or hours of service rules. So there's rules that limit the number of hours a driver can actually operate uh, to prevent fatigue related accidents. So so that's something that that's regulated still in the industry. And it seems like every year it's more and more. There's also vehicle maintenance. So regular inspections, maintenance is also required to ensure vehicles are safe and roadworthy. Otherwise, otherwise, the, the, the fines can really add up a lot really quickly. There's also safety inspections. OK, so trucks must undergo periodic safety inspections to check for mechanical issues and also compliance with safety standards as well. There's cargo securement, so regulations that um, uh, regulations that actually ensure that cargo is properly secured to prevent shifting of freight um, or falling uh, during the transportation of these goods. There's also regulations for emission standards. So the EPA or Environmental Protection Agency sets emission standards to reduce uh, pollution um, from the trucks that are on the road. So that's something that a lot of trucking companies have to follow as well. There's also drug and alcohol testing. So drivers are subject to random drug and alcohol testing to ensure that they are not impaired by driving uh, while driving, excuse me. Uh, there's also insurance requirements. So trucking companies must carry liability insurance to cover uh, potential damages from accidents, essentially. There's uh, weight limits. So regulations set limits on the weight of trucks to prevent damage to roads and bridges. There's also speed limits. So trucks often have lower speed limits than other vehicles to enhance safety on the roads as well. So these regulations are enforced by many different agencies. So like the Department of Transportation, famous DOT. There's the FMCSA, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. There's the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. And compliance with these regulations is actually crucial for maintaining safety and efficiency in the trucking industry. Is there bureaucratic tape? Is there some under the table stuff here? Most likely. I'm, I'm, I'm certain that there's certain people or certain groups of trucking companies that influence how these rules are made. Okay, so the big boys, the big trucking companies, the mega carriers, I do truly believe that they do influence how these rules are, are made. And unfortunately, they try to steer the water towards their mill, so to speak. So they try to uh, influence these uh, policies to benefit mega carriers rather than the mom and pop shop companies, which like I said, 90% of the trucking company is mom and pop shop uh, size, okay? There's also economic pressures that influence and, uh, and uh, make this industry as chaotic as it really is. So economic pressures like fluctuating fuel prices, insurance costs, driver shortages really do add to this chaos of the trucking industry. And smaller companies like you and I, for example, we struggle to stay afloat with ever increasing economic pressures when it comes to this. OK, so we typically have a variety of costs. We have your fixed costs. We have the variable costs on the fixed side. The fixed costs for a trucking company are things like insurance. OK, comprehensive coverage for liability, cargo, workers, compensation, auto liability, general liability. These are things that we need as insurance coverage. There's also equipment payments. So costs associated with purchase, purchasing or leasing trucks and trailers. There's also tolls and scales. Uh, so fees for using the tolls and roads, wait stations, bridges, right? Uh, going on and off islands with ferries, as an example. There's also workers' compensation. There's also legal, accounting, software fees, costs for legal advice, uh, bookkeeping services, 
TMS systems. These are your fixed costs that you typically are on some kind of six month or one year or longer contracts that you have to pay uh, monthly fees fixed every every month it's the same uh, fee essentially okay there's also variable costs so these are things that change month over month depending on the usage so things like fuel okay it's one of the biggest largest expenses with uh, prices fluctuating frequently i saw one guy said it's 25 percent of the total cost i think it's 33 percent i think that most trucking companies are around 33 percent when it comes to fuel maybe some are higher i don't know but 33 i feel is a much more realistic number than 25 percent of the total expenses that you have a, as a trucking company there's also maintenance and repairs costs there's third party labor costs right so things like lumper services for loading and unloading cargo as an example travel and lodging there's brokerage fees, okay, fees to paid for uh, to brokers for securing loads. These could happen as well, depending again how you're set up with uh, with your loads and if you have direct shipper freight or if you have maybe a sales guy or how you break that down. I guess it's up to you. Dispatch fees essentially could be a way to look look at that as well. There's fuel price volatility. There's driver shortages. There's regulatory compliance, as mentioned uh, a few moments ago. There's inflation, so rising costs for truck parts, truck equipment, and wages due to this inflation. And there's supply chain disruptions that happen as well. Okay, Things like equipment and parts shortages can definitely impact your operations. If you're sitting around, if trucks aren't turning, they're, they're not earning, right? They're not making money. So things like this can, can definitely influence uh, what you have even available to to operate with and these costs and pressures make it challenging for trucking companies to maintain financial stability and profitability in this market in this industry in addition to this driver shortages is a big chaotic issue in the industry okay many drivers are facing many drivers are facing long hours and tough working conditions so this definitely does contribute to high turnover rates and further chaos and fragmentation in the trucking industry, okay? So the demand for tra freight transportation has been increasing, especially with the rise of things like e-commerce, okay? And many experienced drivers are retiring, creating a gap in the workforce. And the trucking industry has high turnover rates with many drivers leaving uh, due to job dissatisfaction and maybe even better opportunities elsewhere as well. And that's why we say to trucking companies, you got to treat your drivers a lot better. Drivers definitely can be loyal, but you got to show some loyalty back. Otherwise, they'll go they'll go to the next best place or the next best thing. There's also, um, in addition to turnover rates, there's also um, recruitment challenges. Okay, so recruiting new drivers is difficult due to the demanding nature of the job and the lifestyle that it requires as well. And we can't forget economic pressures such as fluctuating fuel prices, insurance costs, makes it harder for companies to offer competitive wages. Okay, Working conditions is another thing that affects driver turnover as well. Long hours, irregular schedules, health issues, social isolation, job stress. Do any of you uh, have this as a truck driver? Do you feel any of this? Let me know in the comments below. These factors contribute to the high turnover rates and make it challenging to attract and retain drivers in the trucking industry. And addressing these specific issues is crucial for improving the industry's stability and efficiency respectively, okay? In addition to driver shortages on the environmental impact side, environmental and safety concerns are also at the forefront of this chaos stricter emission standards and safety regulations are necessary but they do add another level of chaos and complexity uh, because of this fragmentation and stuff that's happening in the trucking industry and the trucking industry faces these concerns and things like greenhouse gas emissions air pollution okay trucks emit pollutants such as nitrogen oxides particulate matter, sulfur dioxide. This contributes to air pollution and respiratory diseases as well. Noise pollution, fuel consumption, ecosystem impacts, safety concerns, accidents and fatalities, driver fatigue, hazardous cargo issues, health hazards, parking issues, 
Addressing these type of concerns requires a combination of regulatory measures, technological advancements, and industry-wide efforts to improve sustainability, sustainability and safety for those people involved as well in there as well. Okay. Industry experts do suggest that a way forward is consolidation and collaboration. It could help mitigate some things when it comes to this chaos. But there's uh, with so many of these players and interests, it's easier said than done. Okay. But there are some benefits to consolidation. Things like cost saving, okay, by combine, combining smaller shipments into larger ones, companies can reduce transportation costs. And that's due to the econ economies of scale where the cost per unit decreases as the volume increases as well. There's eff uh, efficient resource re utilization, uh, reduced emissions, improved scheduling, uh, enhanced quality control, um, and benefits of collaboration in these types of scenarios Collaboration can uh, offer different departments within a company a lot more opportunity for load optimization and overall efficiency, okay? Uh, problem solving is a benefit of collaboration. It helps to resolve issues a lot quicker. Safety improvements, boosted morale, and customer satisfaction, improved efficiency and re reliability will lead to better service delivery and enhanced or better customer satisfaction and loyalty. They'll keep coming back to you for more uh, help as well. So with that being said, the American trucking industry is a crucial yet very chaotic and fragmented part of the American economy. And understanding its complexities is the first step towards finding solutions and ensuring that the wheels keep turning as smoothly as possible. Thanks for joining us for this video and on this journey through what we've talked about and when it comes to chaos and fragmentation of the trucking industry. Please give this video a like, a comment, a share, a sub subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you on the next one. And thank you. The like helps. It's free to do. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.